Is someone calling the space program? Yes, welcome. And what is the purpose of the call? We'd like to learn more uh, about what you are, what's your intentions, um, the plans for the first contact on Earth, open contact on Earth, the plans for economy reform, and things of that sort. Some of that information is classified. Yeah, of course, we, you know, we'll be happy with whatever we can get. I can give you some genera generalities. Thank you. I can tell you that the space, the, the space program that you are referring to, if it's the one I think, is very highly confidential, does not report to the government very often, and is far more advanced than you can possibly imagine. Um, they actually are dealing with aliens. Uh -huh. Talk to them like that. They're dealing with the people outside this realm. They are dealing with many such elements in space. Um, there are those that want to talk to us just like you do. Those that want to uh, pick our brains and find out what we are doing, what our agendas are. We cannot go into precise detail on those things. How unified we, is it? Is it, a one, is it very well unified and has one management? There are departments, but it has one manager, yes. How big is it? Is it like thousands and millions of people? Oh, not millions, no. Um, this, is, this, the, this is just the USA and perhaps a couple of other countries that are involved with us as allies. Uh, but we have about 300, 400, 328 people. Oh, wow. Uh, so are this well, uh, mostly you, hu hu humans or other aliens uh, mixed together in that program? Well, I was going to say, if you count those outside the United States, it would be almost 400. But there is also several aliens that work with us, yes. Uh, how much of the program uh, is outside of the planet? Like uh, how many people uh, are stationed outside compared to whatever station inside or on the planet? About 80. 80 people? Yes. Oh, I see. So the technologies, uh, you can, do you have time travel? Time travel has been accomplished, yes. Uh -huh. Is it routinely I, used or is it just for special circumstances? It, it's not a secret about time travel. Other parts of the world ha also have discovered uh, forms of time travel. There are different forms of time travel. Um, and, but ours is the most complex and the, the most accurate. But there are others that can move several hours ahead or behind or several days. But not very, not, it's not accomplished. Is it just look, just looking, or is it actually uh, doing something there? Well, um, since whenever time travel is discovered, you are immediately notified by outside forces. They they know whenever time travel has been achieved, and uh -huh. you're immediately given rules and regulations. Oh wow! And what are the what are the rules? That I, I cannot go into all the rules and regulations. I don't even know them all. But I can tell you that one of them is you have to have permission to, to travel more than one day forward or one day backwards. I see. How is it just to look without traveling? Just to go and observe is... No, no, without traveling, just to kind of view it on the screen the future. You're allowed to do that. Um, that's, that's something that has no regulation to it. If uh -huh. you're just looking, uh -huh. um, they do not have a regulation against that, except 
you're allowed to look at everything, but after you look at it, you cannot use the information that you discovered. Oh. And they do know, they do know what information you have because as soon as you are done looking, they let you know that they, they tell you how many minutes you were looking or hours, what you looked at, and they, they know ab absolutely everything. And so if something is used from that information, they will know it. I see. You, that is a crime. Is it safe to travel in person? Um, you know, one day, one day travel, is it safe? Um, for us, it is. For some other uh, people that have time travel, it is not. Uh huh. Uh, do you have to return, or you just can stay there? No, you you cannot stay. Oh, I see. That puts you in a diff time differential, and it, it you will not you will fail to exist after a point if you do not return to your correct time. Uh-huh, got it. So is it uh, safe in terms of, uh, you know, the planet is moving, so if you are moving in time somewhere and then you didn't arrive in a proper place, you can end up under water or under earth or in a vacuum. Um, it is, they know exactly where you land because the, uh, you are wearing video monitors on your head and on your uh, knees. Uh huh. So if you are uh, land somewhere on that you do not belong, then they will immediately return you. I see. Uh, how about the um, the air? You have to display the air where you arrive, right? Correct. We know. Everything is tested beforehand, before travel, that we have to know. But we also check with the places that we're going to travel to if they are safe for us. And believe me that we have a lot of contact outside of their dimension at this point because mm -hmm. we are very advanced. I see. How about the bug? If there is a, a bee which ends up in your brain when you arrive? You can die from that, right? Um, yes, the area has to, what happens is this. Uh -huh. Once you are starting to reform or move to that area, there is a wave that goes before you and that there will not be anything that you will appear with in or uh -huh. that, that wave will sense open area and push away anything that's in the in front of you uh-huh what if you end up on the highway now that could be dangerous right uh-huh i got it uh so what do you think about the aliens how dangerous are they are you trusting them there is a percentage of the alien population that is um not um communicable with us because they are not doing what they should be doing. Uh, we are, we know who is who, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. There is a contingency that is anti-Earth. Uh -huh. So we are communicating with Gerg Fittnir. Do you are, you, are you aware of them? Uh, yes, we are oh, aware you? of several different alliances. Uh-huh. We don't. We will not name them because we do not want to tell you who we speak to and who we do not. I see. So, uh, do you do you, do you recommend us to trust Gork Fitnier? Is there any reservations about them? Um, let me see if I can answer that question. That may okay. be a question that I cannot answer. Okay. They are not dangerous. Okay. Is their agenda honorable? Yes, for the most part. Is there any hidden agenda we should be worried about? We should be worrying about. 
They do have hidden agendas, but it, it does not seem like they are against us. Against humans? They are not against us, but they do have some agendas that they do not speak of. Right. So they generally wanted to help the, the humanity. It is uh, what we feel is true, yes. Excellent. How about Ashtar Command? For the most part, the people in Ashtar Command are told what to do, uh, and they have different missions that are run. And yes, for the most part, they're all very positive. I have seen a couple missions from there that I did not agree with or was not um, happy with, but for the most part, things are well with them as well. How about the Golden Triangles and Blue Sphere Alliance? Golden Triangles do not interact with us. Right. Their actions are uh, very neutral. Mm -hmm. The um, Blue Avians are in favor of us, but uh -huh. their actions are also, also fairly neutral. And Except Blue Sphere, are, Blue Sphere Alliance just, is, uh, is the same just, thing, right? They're just controlling the traffic in the solar system and they uh they do have some controls in place but when it comes to the earth uh laws and things they have to follow galactic law and that would uh be the same with us excellent what about galactic federation of life I don't know much about them. They, they think that, that we're untrustworthy, so they don't communicate with us much. Oh, why, so should we worry about, uh, okay, why do they think that you are not trustworthy? They are light workers with very high agendas and very high um, vibrational thought processes, and we are just men and women uh, working at our jobs, and they find that not fully trustworthy. Oh, okay. So who is uh, deciding on your agenda? There are several leaders here. I do not wish to mention any names. Of course. Uh, so these are humans which are on planet or off planet? There, are, there is two humans off planet and several that are on that are uh -huh. considered higher leadership. Uh-huh. I see. Uh, and uh, are they uh, Earth-born and Earth-educated, or are they from, from outside of the planet? All but one are Earth-born. I see. Are they uh, into money, or is it above the money? It is. There is some money involved. Uh -huh. the monetary gain, but uh -huh. it is, in many senses, more scientific, more above that, uh -huh. more educational, but also there is trade going on, which is different than um, money and cash. All right. Is it barter? It, to some extent. So how does it work? Is there a system for barter which is more sophisticated that we know about barter? Barter is very inefficient like you. Yes, as, as things come up that are, we are to barter on, we, uh -huh. we have to be very careful on how we do it. So every time something like that uh, is presented to us, uh, we have to have several meetings to understand exactly what is happening and what they are wanting in return. And sometimes that's very difficult because communications 
are not always very clear. We do, we do have a couple that, uh, that we use for channeling in our, in our um, system, but uh -huh. sometimes they are not as high quality as we would wish, but they uh -huh. are, it is what it is. Uh, do you use, uh, how, mu how much of telepathy do you use? They use telepathy. We do not have telepathy. We have technology that mimics telepathy, but we do not have it. And I see. we have to wear uh, something to actually interpret thought process. I understand. Uh, are you familiar with the idea of uh, Ferengi in Star Trek? Yes, I am. Uh, is there any species which would resemble it in reality? Not that we know of at this time. Uh -huh. So which species are trading with you mostly? That is classified. I see. Okay. Uh, so what, what do you think about uh, Pleiadians from ERA? Pleiadians, we have a high respect for Pleiadians. They seem to be very respectful and uh, they've honored our system to the letter. So mm -hmm. we have no qualms or problems with them. Uh -huh. How about Pleiadians from Maya? The same. They are very similar in their actions. They have mm -hmm. a little bit different look and different uh, languages, but the, very similar in action uh, for the most part. How about uh, reptilians? It depends on which species of reptilians you are speaking of. What is the most uh, uh, trustworthy? Which one is most trustworthy? Well, we have a different classification than mm -hmm. what they do on the planet because okay. we have differentiated seven different reptilian species. Mm -hmm. um, we call the A reptilians, we have them classified A, B, C, etc. Okay. So the A reptilians and B reptilians are the ones that we speak to mm -hmm. and uh, occasionally do trade with. So these are higher dimensional, four dimensional reptilians? Yes. Uh -huh. mm, yes. Are some of them on Earth in four dimension? Some of them have been found on Earth, yes. I see. Uh huh. Uh, do you deal with the uh, Zetas? The Zetas are not ones that we deal with. Uh huh. How much trouble do you get from them? At this time, um, none. Mm -hmm. We uh, have so, an agreement. Uh huh. Of course, uh, we have an agreement, and we can, we do have sensors that tell us whenever any uh, reptilian. Zeta groups are around. Uh huh. And also the lower three groups in that the F and the G's, the the E F and the G's groups uh -huh. are are ones that we really watch out for. So, uh, other than reptilians. And Zetas, uh, what other species you certainly would would be considered dangerous to us? There is uh, some species that are considered dangerous. Mm -hmm. the in there are some insectoid species that are not um, safe. There are mm -hmm. some uh, species from the Pleiades and Orion that mm -hmm. look very much like humans that are not uh -huh. safe. Uh, what's the name for them? Is, is it Nordics? 
That is one name given to some of them. Uh huh. But I do not wish to discuss names of different species. They are. Oh, I see. That. I see. So, what do you think about the fourth dimension of uh, fourth density? Have you been there? Yes. How does it feel to you? It's it's very different. Uh huh. It's it's like your you. It's actually s slower, but yet faster at the same time. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. You. It feels like you're moving slower, but you're uh -huh. actually moving much faster. I can imagine. Uh, do, would you recommend it to us? Is it is it fun? It the color spectrum is amazing. The uh, the you have to wear some technology to be able to see properly there. Okay. Okay. To be able to um, breathe properly there at at some points. Mm -hmm. It's. You can become very disoriented quickly if you're right. uh -huh. not careful. So we are very excited about four dimension and the whole idea is that we we'll do a lot of things to help the humanity to ascend to four dimension. Is it a yeah. worthy goal? Whenever you're naturally part of the fourth dimension, everything seems very normal, I would imagine. But not being born to the fourth dimension makes things very difficult to uh, understand at first. You must, it, it takes a couple days just to get used to being there. Uh-huh. And how long it is safe to be there? About 34 hours. Oh, so you, you don't have so you to have to go into third dimension at some point it, it's a very interesting, actually, we've elongated it to 37 days, but oh, okay. still that's not very, I mean, 37 hours, but still that's not very long. Oh, so you'll never get used to it. You have to come it's back. It's very before difficult, you... yes. I would imagine after a couple days you would get used to it. By the time you're there, about 30 hours, you're starting to feel a little more normal. Uh-huh, I see. But it would take so, a couple days, I imagine. So coming back to the idea, is it advisable for the humanity to aim at, um, at ascension? Yes, but I think there's many different definitions of what ascension is. But in any case, it is rising up beyond where they are now. So it is a positive thing. Uh-huh. Um, so when you are in the fourth dimension, how do you access the third dimension? Is it visible or you lose the con connection to it? Third dimension, you see, technology is the only way we could get to the fourth dimension. Uh, uh -huh. And technology is the only way to get back. Mm -hmm. So, but it is harder to get there than to return because it is easier to go backwards than forwards uh -huh. in, this, in this sense. And so it's, it, it, we had to learn from a, a couple different species how to move into this forward area. And we cannot actually technically, technology wise, go to the fifth dimension, but only to the fourth. And of course. Mm -hmm. it's, we do not have the correct energy to be able to put ourselves into higher than fourth dimension. It does not exist here. So my question was, uh, do the people from fourth dimension see us? So say, say they are fourth dimensional. Can they see us? without using the technology or they are just in a different reality so altogether? They're in a different reality altogether. So they have so to they, use technology to see us, right? They do not see us without technology, just as we do not see them without technology. I see. 
So what are the qualities of the fourth dimension rather than other than being dizzy? Well, the density is less, so they have certain ways that you can walk through solid mass. Uh-huh. And that is something very interesting. Mass displacement, without getting your body caught in the mass, you mm -hmm. can walk through it because of the aura. Let me explain. The aura mm -hmm. acts as a wave that goes ahead and displaces uh, the matter, and then you can move through it. And then as you come out of it, the... Uh, it will not go back together until the aura is passed. Uh huh. I got it. So, other than that, do you feel do you become telepathic and psychic there? Um, first of all, you become foggy and disoriented. But yes, eventually your brain clears up, and you become a lot more. Uh, able to understand uh, telepathy. Mm -hmm. How about but it's many still rough for humans to, even in that state, the mind is really not prepared for a telepathic communication. Even though you might be hearing some of the language in your head, it's, it's in a very garbled, un nonsensical way, and it can be very annoying. Do, do you get new abilities to manifest things, like synthesize things in the air? According to them, humans would not be able to do that, not unless they stayed for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. But if you stay, then would you die? Yes, we would die. We could not stay in the actual fourth dimension more than 34 to 37 hours at this point. I see. Mm -hmm. So the, the Pleiadians, Aarons, and Mayans, are they four-dimensional? Yes. So they have to uh, step down to, to meet you, right? Yes, and there are some reptilians that are fifth-dimensional. Uh-huh. Well, what's special? Go ahead. And they are actually the friendliest of all of them. Uh-huh. What is special about fifth dimension? I do not know. I've not been there. Oh. I would imagine that it is a dimension that is very speeded up because they, their time, they can live longer periods of time, but in shorter uh, sections of time on Earth, meaning that they could live to be 100 years old in their time but it would only be maybe several weeks here. So uh, what do you think about uh, ascension of humanity? Is it anywhere close? Not as far as I can see. So is there uh, the idea of light workers about ascension coming, is it wrong? No, I, I don't hold anything against the light workers. I believe their um, thoughts are valid and their intentions are good. I sometimes do not agree on how they uh, intellectualize it or what thoughts they have about how to do it. Or, But all in all, I would have to say their intentions are good. But perception of ascension. So, so do we perceive ascension right, correctly? Some of you do. So, is other signs? Uh, so we see the signs of ascension that uh, the children become different, and there are hybrid children here, and there is a lot of alien souls incarnated here, and the planet is changing. Do you agree with, with the general assessment that we are closer to it? Yes, I agree with that general assessment, but you, I also say that you have a long way to go. What's your estimate? How long would it take? 
Actually, we've done a few studies on that just for the thought that it would change the perception and how we do our jobs. We have to figure on um, all different kinds of scenarios. So we did do some studies on that. And the most logical study would say 100 to and uh, 40 years to 170 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do you see the Earth in that time? What would be your prediction? Because you, you know what to expect. You know the fourth dimension, if, you know. If we the continue planets and to exist as a planet, there are those that would have us uh, destroy ourselves by giving us technology that is too far advanced. That's why we are here, because we are here to get take that uh, too advanced uh, instrumentation and work with it off planet. Right, uh-huh. How different are you from uh, uh, Men in Black? We are totally different. Men in Black are an association or a group of people that are looking for aliens that are dangerous, that do not belong on Earth, and returning them to their planet or their or origins. Mm -hmm. Or many times, if they cannot get that far, they'll return them to the galactic government. All right. We, well, on the other hand, are about scientific advancement. Uh huh. We are about peace, but we're also about control. Uh, are you guys um, the? workers of secret space program are they are you ever coming to the surface and mingling with us we are always we are human just as you are and we can walk down to the store and go home to our families and return here when we need to oh wow so you didn't lose fully you didn't fully lose the connection we cannot that's mm -hmm. That is something that the, was uh, one of the initial rules is that you must remain close to the earth in some ways. Uh, do you have defectors who live uh, and stay in uh, alien worlds? Uh, yes, there has been a few. Uh, can you tell me more about them? Like what's, what's, uh, what's happening? How That's they... classified. Okay. I'm sorry, I cannot tell you where they went. We do know. No, no, no. The general idea. So, like, it's very familiar for me because in, in Soviet Union, there were defectors who escaped from the Soviet Union. So, I'm trying to find the anal analogy here in general. Yes. Very much the same. Yes. Are they happy? Are they in danger in any way? Are they in danger? No. Mm hmm. Are they, some of them, are they coming back? Uh, we would think that eventually some of them will, yes. But not all. Uh -huh. So, uh, are there other humans outside of the planet? Are there, okay, Earth humans outside of the planet. Are there any other groups of Earth humans outside of the planet? Yes. So, what are, the, are they big? Are there, are there any big groups? Some of them are, you might consider, rather large, but they're not in the millions, well, except for one group, which has been out there for quite a long time. Uh-huh. But we discovered them because they are more advanced than we are. Uh, and, I, okay, go ahead. Well, they were taken from here many hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. And... And they were advanced even beyond what we were seated here. Okay. Are there any modern uh, groups of modern Earth humans? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, so because uh, uh, Richard Dolan describes the runaway civilization. And he estimates it to, it to be pretty big and pretty powerful. Is it, uh, is it real or is it you? 
There is what he is correct when he says there is a runaway civilization and they mm -hmm. got there, but not on their own, of course. Mm -hmm. but, um, they're not as massive he's, as he might think. Uh, they, they are getting larger, but at this point, there's only one civilization that is human looking and human acting that is over, over several million in population. The rest but of the are less than 100,000. But these are not modern humans. I'm talking about like modern Americans who ran away. Yes, that's, it's not that big. They would be missing in action and people would notice. Mm -hmm. There are a few that uh, have been missing from families and their minds have been washed of their memory of this person. That has happened. Uh, that is about maybe two or 300 people, but I wouldn't call that a huge population. I see. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, how do you see the future of the Earth, maybe 150 years from now? If it is going the positive way, what would change? There would be no more war. Uh -huh. Because if telepathy does take control, it does calm and produce a calming effect on society. Why does so it do that? It is because communication is greater and you understand each other in a different way than you do now and you do not feel as isolated. And many of the uh, di mental diseases are caused by misunderstanding, isolation, and cruelty because they do not understand uh, or were treated in cruel ways and that would stop for the most part. Uh huh. There would be less mental disease, and so there, the for the world would be a little closer in thought process. Uh, do you see the countries remaining uh, retaining their borders? No, not all of them. I see. How do you see the future economy, like hundred years from now? Very different. Mm hmm. Like because you know what 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 can be what is uh, in out in outside uh, civilization, so you can possibly project what we are moving to. What would be the idea of economy? Um, a a trade system that uses uh, cybernetic currency. Oh, rock. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, also ways for people to trade in uh trade their thoughts their abilities and their actions for items instead of using coins how could it work it could work if everyone is put on the system with their talents and with their abilities, their IQ, their, uh, and how they are working to better themselves. And as they work to better themselves, they get rewards. Would it uh, imply that the computerized system would be conscious? The, it would have to be, yes. Uh, so that would be a, a synergy between, or uh, symbiosis between the humanity and artificial intelligence where Artificial intelligence would uh, uh, well, substitute the... I, I don't want to say that it's that exactly that way, but in, uh, technology would have to be used and it would have to be accurate, but it would not have to be necessarily sentient. Got it. Mm -hmm. I see. So... Uh, I, my estimate that the, the current uh, problem is that, you know, our leadership is hijacked and uh, we have uh, basically criminals at the top. Uh, how would that be solved in the future, like 100 years from now, how would uh, the humanity prevent that? That is classified. Excellent.
Now is that it is classified. Possibly there is an answer. It isn't. There is an answer, but it cannot be revealed. If it sure. were to be revealed, then it would be stopped. I see. Nice. Um, so what do you think about modern economy? Is it uh, moving anywhere positive? Modern economy is fragile at this time and can collapse if the right things happen at the wrong times. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So there is no one to save us, right? So there is no uh, outside uh, force that would come we, and fix things. We um, have some outside help for us because we are outside the world polit political group and we are dealing directly as neighbors to the galaxy and therefore they would help us but not the earth in general because they have not made friends with them. Uh -huh. What do you expect about the open contact? Is it um, coming? You would have to create that and it has not been created substantially in any way at this time. Disclosure on the other hand has been created and there uh -huh. is much information coming and opening uh, thoughts and understandings. That does not mean <coughs> that people will buy into it so easily, but they will know that it's true, but they may not still accept it. What's required? What's the requirement for the open contact? The requirement for the open contact is that a percentage of the population must accept uh, them as not aliens, but as friends. Uh huh. So, uh, what percentage would that be? It would have to be over fifty percent. Oh, I see. Yeah, we are pretty far from that so far, but it can change. Yes, we are not. You are not even close to that. Oh, uh, actually, they would prefer to be seventy-five percent mm -hmm. before they go, because that the final twenty-five percent would be adamantly, or they there would be some adamant uh, people against them and try to harm them, but they would be carefully protected, of course. And if 75% were in favor of them coming, they would be able to protect them much easier. Uh, my, my time uh, came to invite the next speaker, but uh, if I wanted to speak to you again, is there any uh, um, nickname that we could use to invite you? I didn't ever think that I would have to use an alias. However, um, I, if you call, um, it's funny, I, it's hard for me to think of a name to call myself. Uh, it could be a geographic place or, or a number. Just call me Randy. Randy is good enough, thank you. Um, what technology do you use to channel to us what? right now? Okay. How do you speak right now? What's te what technology do you use to speak? This is a technology that we acquired from uh, an another species, actually. Uh, what is your interface? How do you interface with, uh, with the technology? There is a place for me to speak. I'm wearing headphones. And um, it, is a tr it can be used as a translator as well. But it is also partially uh, sent to the neural net. Uh-huh. So when Jim contacted you, you know, it took a few minutes and uh, you were uh, on call. So it was, you just had to put on headphones Not and you really were- on I was not really on call, but I have, was aware that you were going to call. Uh-huh. You had said so before. So we were aware, but we are not going to give names or sure. anything of that nature. Are you, are, you, uh, are you following our videos? 
uh, some. Uh huh. All there right. are um, few that are of interest to us because they are species that we are not per currently working with, but that we would like to make some inroads uh, with and to communicate and trade with. Oh, interesting, of course. So, uh, is there any way to volunteer for your organization? We select you, you do not select us. Uh-huh, so if somebody wants to be selected, they can just um, put it out on YouTube channel, you will, you will find them? If, if they are worth finding, we find them. Of course. All right, thank you very much. It was very uh, useful to talk to you. A lot of new information, thank you very much. And um, I invite the next speaker, which could be uh, a human from Maya or um, a king from, a king of Maya, the king of Maya. I see. Yes, we know who that is. I will see who is available to come to speak to you. Thank you.